Hi there, this is Estelle Crengove. I've had some questions about the practice test, so I'm quickly going to do a short video about question one of the practice test. The first question asks you to find I1 and V1 in this first little circuit. So we can see here there's a current source and the current is flowing in this direction. So we know because it's an ideal current source, we know that there are seven amps flowing everywhere around the circuit in this direction. We've selected I1 to be randomly indicated flowing in this direction. So you can see I1 is defined as flowing in the opposite direction to the 7 amp source. Mm. So we can simply say that I1 is equal to minus 7 amps. And then using the current from the ideal current source, we know that V1 by Ohm's law is equal to 7 amps times 5 ohms, so it's equal to 35 volts. The second circuit is a little bit more complicated. It's got a minus, seven, minus 9 volt source, and so we don't really want to work with a minus 9 volt source because we need to work out whether it's supplying or absorbing power. So the first thing I'm going to do is to redraw that circuit. We've got a 9 milliamp ideal current source. Remember that an ideal current source also has a voltage associated with it. And that voltage is V3. And then we've got the 10 kilo ohm resistor. And it's got a voltage drop of V2 across it. And then what we're going to do is we want to change this to a 9 volt source. But if we change the sign of the voltage, we also have to change the polarity of the voltage. So instead of having it like it is in the drawing with the minus at the top and then the plus, because we're making it a 9 volt source, we put the plus at the top and the minus. So m minus 9 volts like this is exactly the same as 9 volts drawn like this. Okay, so um, the first thing we have to work out is V2, and again, we can just use Ohm's law. So we know that there's a current of 9 milliamps flowing over here. So by Ohm's law, V2 is equal to 9 milliamps times 10 kilo ohm. So that's equal to 9 times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 times 10 to the 3. And that's equal to 90 volts. Now we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to work out V3. So by Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we're going to go this way around the circuit. And we start at one point. So we're going to start at the bottom left hand corner and just work our way around so and we know that all the voltages around the circuit must sum to zero so moving 
up this leg we get to the minus sign first so we write minus v3 and then we keep moving around the circuit and we get to the plus sign of v2 first so we write plus v2 and then we keep going around our circuit and we get to the plus sign of the 9 volt source first so we write plus 9 volts and we know that all of that is equal to 0. So from before we know that V2 is 90 volts so therefore we can write minus V3 plus 90 volts plus 9 volts equals 0 so therefore V3 is equal to 99 volts. And then the question asks us uh, which source is supplying and which source is um, absorbing. So we've seen here now that the V3 is equal to 99 volts with the plus here and the minus there. So since we have a current, a positive current flowing from the lower voltage to the higher voltage, we know therefore that the 9 milliamp source is supplying and it is supplying 99 volts times 9 milliamps and that gives us 891 milliwatts. Um, we now have to work out whether the 9 volt source is supplying or absorbing and so we see that over here the 9 milliamp current is flowing from the higher voltage to the lower voltage and so we know that the 9 volt source is absorbing power so the 9 volt source is absorbing and it is absorbing 9 volts times 9 milliamps which is equal to 81 milliwatts and then to see whether this makes sense um, we know that by the conservation of energy we know that the sum of the power absor absorbed is equal to the sum of the power supplied. So this is the this is the power that's being supplied and the power that's being absorbed is being absorbed by the 9 volt voltage source and also by the 10 kilo ohm resistor so the power absorbed by the 10 kilo ohm resistor is also going to be the voltage of that resistor the voltage drop across that resistor which we saw V2 is equal to 90 volts multiplied by 9 milliamps and that is equal to 810 milliwatts so the total power absorbed is 
81 milliwatts plus 810 milliwatts, which is equal to 891 milliwatts. So the total power absorbed is equal to the total power supplied. So our calculations do make sense. That is the end of this video.